So what is going on guys? It's your boy Nistro here and we are back. New format. Well, same format, new list, and we need to innovate. We need to keep some of these decks going. We need to, you know, keep these decks at the forefront, at the apex of their potential. And so I figured the first deck I would deep dive into for this format is TG because I haven't done TG in a while. So while I was away, I was testing mostly Goblin Biker and uh, I do have Goblin Biker content coming out soon, don't worry. There is a Goblin Biker list for before Rage of the Abyss comes out and one for after, but I kind of wanted to challenge myself to do something a little different and something that kind of meant a little more to me. So I love TGs as an archetype and I want to keep this deck going. Now that I know that Snake Eye has not been hit as much as I thought it was going to, and with the Megatons right around the corner, prices should be going down. I know that everything just shot back up because of the ban list, but trust me, the Megatons are gonna bring those prices back down. It's not gonna be like crazy, crazy affordable, but it'll be way, way nicer than however it was a few months ago or even however it is uh, right now, because I know Azamina is going to uh, cause a steady demand for the Simple Spoils and Snake Eyes engines, but it's kind of still up in the air whether Snake Eye players are going to be around. Um, like pure Snake Eye, I don't think it's gonna be around. I think everyone is going to be on the Fiendsmith engine from this point forward, or like Fire King or some other variant. But the simple spoil stuff is still gonna be pretty pricey. Triple wanted poster, triple D Bell Star, and this is simply because we want to get to our engine, right? Like we if, if you need a little refresher, TGs cannot get started without their level two synchro. If we couldn't get to level two synchro, we'd need like three or four cards. And the fastest, most efficient way into the level two synchro is the original simple spoils to go into Snake Eye Ash. You could also just normal summon the Ash. If you, if you open Ash and you normal summon it, it's just as good. One for one into Ash, just as good. And even Bonfire. And it's really nice that Bonfire also got announced for the Megatons. So we're not going to be left um, high and dry on this card, only being in like that terrible maze set from the beginning of the year. It's also going to be in the Megatons and hopefully more affordable than it was before. Now, we only have the one here because if you look at the list, we, we like our best two Snake Eye monsters are limited. And this is really only here as a backup if like Ash gets impermed or something, right? So if Ash gets impermed or Dominus purged, then we can bonfire for Poplar and Poplar can still summon itself from the hand and we can keep going, right? Like we're not gonna be completely dead on arrival. Next is Snake Eye Oak. In reality, you could play either the Oak or the Flameberg. You don't have to play both. I just like Oak better because A, it could give us potential access into Salamander again and B, because it's just a better like turn three draw than a Flameberg would be. It's also less of a brick, right? Because a lot of our cards don't use our normal summon and I'd rather have something like Oak in hand than a Flameberg in hand. Now that Baron's banned, there's really no reason for us to be playing Flameberg anyway. And we're not using Horus to go into number 90. So Oak, I think is the best one, right? Uh, our goal is to get to a level two synchro. So let's stick with level one monsters, right? Next is triple break limiter. And before, I think you probably could have cut this card out of your list completely because Snake Eyes was pulling all the work. But there are some new lines now with TG Warwolf. Well, they're not really new, but there's just, there's a lot to discover with TG. And these are lines that you may you may not have considered before because there was more optimal cards and gates and stuff like that out at the time. But I think now this is the most optimal route to go for TG as you'll see in the combos coming up. Uh, thanks to the existence of TG Warwolf. Warwolf allows us to go into Herald of the Arclight very easily because all of our tuners are level one other than Screw Serpent and having access to a Warwolf uh, gives us a very easy line into Herald of the Arclight before we start our TG lines, right? Our main TG line. So before we start the Mighty Striker and stuff. So Warwolf is going to open up the deck a lot. A lot of this video is going to be based around this card and what this card offers TG. So stay tuned if you're curious. Double Screw Serpent, one for the combo, one for follow-up. You could bring it down to one if you wanted to, if you feel like it's uh, it's not necessary. I, I do like the one for the combo, one for follow-up uh, method because 
if you get negated on like let's say snake eye ash and you don't have bonfire like opening like break limiter to go screw serpent also isn't a bad idea next is uh jet synchron which this probably should have been with the snake eye stuff but yeah uh this gives you more options as to how you want to go into your mighty striker so if you go into mighty striker using jet synchron you won't have access to tank rub but it gives you more versatility for going second, right? If you remember my video in February, when I showed the going second OTK with uh, Princess into Raging Phoenix into Zealantis, uh, Jet Synchron was pretty good because it could still revive itself after you did all that. And that was pretty good. Also, it just being able to discard to bring itself back has a lot of resiliency and there's a lot of cool ways you can use this card. So just in case you open this with Diabell Star or like one for one, it can be pretty useful as, as like a discard and you can use it to get into your Mighty Striker in case uh, going for Poplar fails. Because if you resolve any of these first 11 cards, they're gonna think that you're on pure Snake Eye or you're on Snake Eye Fiendsmith. They're not gonna see the TG engine coming. And that's gonna be like, this is, this is all the hand trap bait, right? Like all of this is going to be what they use their main hand traps on. And then everything after is like what you actually want to do. So by the time you get to this, they probably would have already used like an imperm or something, or if not, then it can be a really good card for extending. So next we have double rocket salamander and the best that this card could do by itself is make a level 10 synchro. If you have one more TG in hand, so him plus any other TG, in hand can equal a trident launcher and i'm not really sure how good a trident launcher is by itself like with no other support so i haven't really delved that deep into it but i know it's not really optimal i don't want to spend main deck space on something that isn't really like the best starter like rocket salamander is the best extender if you already have a little something set up if you have any other level one monster and you have a rocket salamander you're golden but Rocket Salamander as your only card is really not that great. So that's why, again, I'm not tripling down on the bonfire. It's a hard once per turn, and we don't really have that many searches for it. So I, I figure Rocket Salamander at two is best. Don't worry, I know. I have three QCRs of this card. It's a little sad for me to not play it at three, but I'm like, it's probably for the best. I'd much rather see other cards. So I have one for the combo, one for follow-up. The same way as Screw Serpent, one for the combo, one for follow-up. We have the one Booster Raptor. I like him as an extender, and he's better than the Drillfish because the Drillfish says you can only control TG monsters, while Booster Raptor is more like a Kizon. Uh, it's just while you control any TG monster. So uh, Booster Raptor is my preferred extender over the rest. TG Gear Zombie isn't bad, but I would much rather save the space for something else. If you feel like going over 40, then by all means, you can bump up Bonfire and then put in like Gear Zombie. You can, you know, put in some other stuff, but I think Booster Raptor is the best extender because if you open Booster Raptor with like Rocket Salamander, like let's say you go uh, Limiter Removal because you already have TG Warwolf. Salamander plus Booster Raptor is great because Salamander is tribute, summon out Tank Rub, and boom, you have your level two, a Synchro. And we can't forget the best boy when he's used for a TG Synchro, summons out TG Token. He's part of the four for the core. When you want to make a, a big TG board, you want to have Tank Rub around. If you don't have Tank Rub when you're trying to make a board, more often than not, the only thing you're making is one level 12 if, if you don't have Tank Rub. But if you have Tank Rub, you can probably do a, a whole lot more than just one level 12. So this card as weird and as simple as it looks is actually very crucial for extending and building our boards because its ability to swap between tuner and non-tuner is also another big reason why this card is a mainstay in TG, even though it doesn't do anything by itself. All clear is the best staple of the deck, right? You, you need to play this card at least one. Some people may even play this card at two because of the follow-up it provides. If you don't think you can win in one turn and this card gets cleared from the field, you may want a second one, especially if you're playing two Mighty Striker. It's TG Close, you mill this with a uh, Mighty Striker. And so once it's in the graveyard, you banish Synchro Monster, however you do it. Um, there are so many ways to do it with Glaive Blaster and uh, Shooting Star Dragon TGEX that like this card is so easy to access even from the graveyard. So it's really great that Mighty Striker can mill this card so that you can uh, get a live negate even without having to open it or to search it. So it, it's a good play around like stuff like Droll and you could still set this card up because all clear would make all your TG's machines. I mean, it's just overall a great card. I mean, if you open it, it's even better because then you get to use it twice 
in the same game, which probably won't be every game, but when you can, that'll be the fucking day. Next is uh, Synchro Rumble. So I put this in as follow up for turn three, because when we summon Crimson Dragon on our opponent's turn, being able to search something like Crimson Rumble, uh, Synchro Rumble on top of already drawing cards off of something like Hyper Librarian could be very effective in, in, in helping us get a, another push into the opponent so that we're not just preying on just the one board that we made like we can actually make multiple boards and like work around with or our opponent stopping our lines at certain points so it's not a bad draw and it's searchable and it it, it, it helps a lot with the follow-up right because if you can revive like a screw serpent if you can revive star guardian even mighty striker unfortunately it only says level seven or eight dragon synchros so it can't bring back your tgex but uh is what it is right it, it, it can't be everything it, it's it's searchable so gonna take what we can get uh next is our hand trap hater lineup so called by and cross out and so cross out is going to become a lot more relevant once the mulcharmi uh furos comes out in rage of the abyss the reason why i wanted to make this video now is because i wanted to look ahead at rage of the abyss and see is there anything that's going to change the way that you play tg and there's really nothing in that set for tg this other than these two generic hand traps so the dominus impulse and the mulcharmi and tenpai is going to become very scary once they have both mulcharmis right because now it's not even like you should side deck these now it's like you should have an out for these in your main deck if you're going up against tenpai so i'm having like one of each to where if i if i play going second and i draw one of these mulcharmis i'm not going to hate myself and if i play going first i can discard them for diabelle star uh one for one limiter removal it's really not that big of a deal if i draw these going first it's just we want to have a to not get gamed by a lot of these decks out here so um it's just good to keep these cards around if you have them you only need one copy of each if you can afford them if you can't i get it right same thing for like the dominuses uh purge is starting to get really popular because you know you have melodious you have voiceless and any deck that uses like entirely like light monsters or uh entirely earth but still the light decks like melodious and voiceless voice are still like pretty significant rogue decks you're probably going to see this card around so if you want to have this in your main deck you can um if you feel like it's not relevant enough for you to main deck it for, as a cross out target that's also fine i also don't mind playing this in my deck going first because if i draw into it with hyper librarian you can just set it and when you activate the card when it's set you don't have to worry about the restriction of the dark water or fire monsters same thing with, with uh, dominus impulse whereas this one restricts light earth and wind which is literally like a uh, glaive blaster crimson and uh cosmic blazer <laughs> so uh this this one is the one you want to be more careful with once this comes out because it's a really good effect right stopping your opponent from special summoning a monster with a card effect but it's also something you need to be cognizant of because you are going to potentially want to cross out it because these don't play into talents so maybe talent isn't like as strong because this is going to be in snake eyes probably going to be an azamina I all the azaminas are dark so they aren't hurt by dominus impulse so azamina snake eye can play this card no issue at three copies there's no card in their engine that i think is light earth or wind that'll really hurt them other than like the mocharmi but you always resolve mocharmi first anyway so that's not gonna really hurt you if you go mocharmi and then you draw into a dominus impulse so that's that's the one thing you got to be cognizant of as well and then we have all our other hand traps you could also put Ghost Mourner in, right? So if you're not as worried about Impulse, you could play Ghost Mourner, Spooky Dogwood, what may have you. The, that's uh, our main deck. Next is our extra. We have one Glaive Blaster, one Hobbard Cannon. So there's one line where we can make a double level 12. So using the Axel Synchro portion of our deck, and thanks to TG Warwolf, we're able to, to make Mighty Striker plus Warwolf into a Dragonar on our opponent's turn. And when we can make Dragonar on our opponent's turn, we are doing big Axel Synchro plays, right? But we're locked into TG, meaning we cannot do Crimson Dragon into Blazar on our opponent's turn if we decide to do the uh, Warwolf line, meaning we'll need something like either a second Glaive Blaster, because nothing on Glaive Blaster is hard once per turn, or we can go for Halberd Cannon. And Halberd Cannon's pretty nice, right? 
So it's not as strong as Blazar because Blazar can negate cards or effects, or it can also negate summons, but uh, Halberd Cannon being able to negate a summon and then you can actually banish your own Halberd Cannon with Glaive Blaster and then bring it back with Glaive Blaster because just like Cosmic Blazar who needs to be Synchro Summoned, Glaive Blaster does not care. As long as a monster was properly summoned the first time, Glaive Blaster can bring back any monster ignoring summoning conditions. So it can bring back Halberd Cannon, it can bring back Blazar, it just cannot work with something like TJ Halberd Cannon Assault Mode, which I wish it did because if it could work with this card, we would be playing this card. If Glaive Blaster actually worked with um, Halberd Cannon Assault Mode, we would be playing it. I'm telling you that right now because I had a line where I could have made this, but it doesn't work that way, sadly. And it doesn't make any sense because there are Assault cards that can summon out Assault monsters, ignoring their summoning conditions with the exact same wording but it's it's different right i, I don't know whatever that's Yu Gi Oh for you comes in and then shooting star dragon tgex right because this is a preferred way to go into crimson dragon if you're trying to go blazar the reason for that is because this allows you to summon back your tg midas striker on the same turn that you summon it blade blaster needs to wait until your opponent's turn to trigger your glaive blaster so if you go blade blaster you need to wait until your opponent's standby phase or your opponent's draw phase to banish mighty striker from your graveyard and then it banishes itself then glaive blaster triggers bringing back mighty striker and then once it hits standby phase blade blaster comes back then once you go into main phase you get to go uh, Blade Blaster plus uh, Mighty Striker into Crimson and then Crimson into Blazar. Previously, that was better for Calamity because you probably wouldn't need Glaive Blaster's effect again if you went for Calamity because there would be no no other monster to summon. But now that Calamity's gone and we can actually play a skillful, honest deck, Glaive Blaster with Blazar, you'd, you'd much rather have Blazar banish itself and then come back on your opponent's turn. So if you do Blade Blaster, you cannot use Glaive Blaster on Blazar. You only get one Blazar negate. But if you use TGEX to banish the Mighty Striker on your turn using Screw Serpent's Graveyard Effect, and then you trigger Glaive Blaster on your turn and you simultaneously trigger the TG close because you trigger, it's two birds, one stone. So you get back close and then you get to special summon back the TG Mighty Striker and then you pass turn with TGEX and Mighty Striker on your field, you can save your Glaive Blaster resummon on the opponent's turn for your Blazar so that you get two Blazar negates instead of just one. That's why we're playing TGEX over the Blade Blaster. But Blade Blaster is a great card, don't get me wrong, but TGEX has its own sauce too. So its first effect is that when a monster effect is activated that targets a monster you control, you banish a tuner, negate, and destroy. This is not once per turn. So if they SP Little Knight you, you can use this effect as many times as you want, as many times as you need. And then secondly, it also has the ability to bring itself back during the opponent's turn by tripping any two synchros. You go like Dragonar and you've run out of extra deck um, monsters to go into. You can just start bringing back your TGEX from the graveyard, which is actually really cool. And it can also like negate attacks. So if you want to protect yourself from battle, let's say you're able to make like Herald of, of the Arclight and go into TGEX, it can protect the Herald of Arclight from battle. So there are some lines where TGEX is a preferred card to go into. Also, it's like the perfect TG monster because like it's using like Yusei's cards with like Antimony's cards. I wish they would have had more of a bond in the anime, but nigga had to do what he had to do. One Hyper Librarian, because it's still limited. If this was not limited, I would say this would be like a two of at least. Double Dragonar, you could play this at three for certain lines. This is where the flex spots kind of come in, because in certain lines, this is really good at three. In others, it's like, yeah. TG Scar uh, Star Guardian is a really good one as well. So Star Guardian, this card is like a staple in the deck for like recursion. And this is the only TG Synchro that activates on special summon rather than synchro summon so if you bring it back with dragonar during your opponent's turn you get to add a tg back back to your hand and good for extending it helps you axel synchro great card overall and it looks like the character that actually uses tgs and you know 5ds so i'm never taking this card out of the deck herald of the arc light this is our new negate now that baron's gone well not now but you know baron has been gone and appalooza is kind of out of the picture now we could have used appalooza before but it would have taken up too many resources anyway we would have needed like two to three cards to use apo so i much like herald I, I like herald a lot better because it's a mini floodgate and it's a negate and it works really well with the engine it doesn't conflict really like at all as long as you're playing the engine the right way so 
I think it's a really good card. Double Mighty Striker, you probably don't need two for most of the lines. You can cut this out for one of your other ones. So depending on which lines you want to go for, you probably won't need the second Mighty Striker. It might come in clutch if you want to go for the double 12 line, you, you could use a double uh, Mighty Striker. It really depends on like how you want to orient your deck. Next is TG Trident Launcher. And I have to say, I really underestimated this card when I was first playing TG or when I first did those videos because when Savage Strike came out, this card, like we had Halka Fibrax when this card first came out. Meaning there was a line that went like Halka Fibrax plus like any tuner or plus a TG tuner from deck, right? Which Halka Fibrax could summon, got you into TG Trident Launcher and that got you into a Halberd Cannon because then you'd go Star Guardian plus this plus that. And basically it was so much easier. But once Halk got banned, there really was no easy way into this card until Age of Overlord support came out. So I really didn't spend a lot of time testing with this card because Dragonar did so much more or Dragonar kind of did everything. Dragonar did all the lifting. But now I'm seeing with the way that things are going, I kind of like Trident Launcher a bit more now. I've, I've been playing around with it a bit more and it has some sauce. So we're gonna get into some, uh, some Trident Launcher lines really soon. SP as a obligatory rank two, uh, link two for breaking boards and playing around with stuff like imperm. Uh, I can help you banish your own Dragonar so that it doesn't get impermed or whatever, but there's no way they're holding Dragonar, um, imperm for Dragonar unless you open, unless you do not open the snake eye engine. It's, it's almost like never going to happen. Like maybe going second, this can be a lot more important, but going first they're if they hold their imperm for Dragonar, I don't know what they're doing because you you almost always make uh, SP Little Knight if if your Snake Eye shit like actually resolves and Anima as our necessary link one side deck right so we have the Zeolantis Raging Phoenix package this is really only good going second so you can take out Trident Launcher you can take uh, Halberd Cannon going second you can take out Crimson plus Blazar because you're not making those going second you can possibly take out the second Mighty Striker you can also play Tactics and Evilly match for going second right these are great board breakers to two of the best board breakers to this day Wonder Magician is actually a really good card as well like uh when you want to go for the double boss line there is actually a potential where you can go for like Late Blaster plus TGEX plus Wonder Magician so that gives you like two banishes off of Glade Blaster, plus a pop off Wonder Magician, plus Counter Trap that's still like four interruptions off of like one to two cards. Reciprocal Dragonfly is, this card's very gimmicky. Unfortunately, Halberd Cannon is a when effect. So Halberd Cannon does not actually trigger off of this card. If it did, it would probably be a lot better. Blade Blaster is just a little bit outdated. If you can find a good use for it, it's not a bad card to play. Dragonar, two or three, Two minimum, but you could play three. I, I think three makes more sense in certain lines. And then Metal Marcher for like the one line uh, to go like Herald plus SP. This is mostly so that when we go SP, we can trigger our TG close. So if you want Herald plus SP plus triggering uh, TG close, then you go Metal Marcher. I'll still show you that line, even though I don't think the line is as strong as some of the others. Having two layers of protection during your turn is still one of the best things you can ask for. Metal Skeleton, as I mentioned earlier, during your opponent's turn, you can mill this off of the uh, Mighty Striker um, that you use for a Synchro Summon. TG Jet Falcon. If you're going into the Trident Launcher, if you're playing in time and you need to burn, Jet Falcon's the way to go. It's the best way to do it within the TG engine. And so basically you just use a screw serpent from the graveyard to manipulate its level. So you either make a level two to work with Warwolf or you make a level four to work with one of your level ones like uh, Booster Raptor or Rocket Salamander and you can make a level five Synchro. Gear Zombie, decent extender. I don't know if it's the best extender for this deck or for, for this variant of the deck, like the current build. Keep your Gear Zombies around. It may be useful in the future. Maybe once we have to, maybe if we get like a more, more TG support. I was trying to figure out some level two monsters I could use with Mighty Striker to make Herald uh, previously. I didn't want to play the Sprite engine just because Sprite is to play Sprite and then to be like without being able to play Sprite starter kind of seems redundant because like, how are you searching these Sprite monsters without playing like 30 of them? And then if you play so many Sprite monsters, then it gets in the way of you actually starting your turn. It's kind of like Pearly Sprite in a way where I'm sure like if I had the right hand, like if I open like a way into the level two plus one of the Sprite monsters, it could work. 
but yeah but otherwise it probably wouldn't be that good meow mine would only be good if we open snake eye engine so if we don't open snake eye engine this card's worthless in our hand because we're not making the relinquished anima so i don't think this would be the best card and doppel warrior i think the timing's just off for this card because we need to be able to summon from graveyard to resolve this and we can't summon from graveyard until we make dragonar and we're not making dragonar uh, unless we go for screw serpent but we don't make screw serpent in every line so it's just not the kind of consistent you need and then there's drillfish which this is the one that i think isn't as good as booster raptor but for going second, like if you can get this card to attack directly, you can pop a monster your opponent controls. So that's cool. Gravity Collapse is a going first card. So theory with this and stuff like uh, Anti-Spell is that you're drawing like two, three cards off of Hyper Librarian and it makes it a lot more likely that you'll see like these going first cards in your opening hand, like Solemn Judgment, Gravity Collapse, Anti-Spell. So I figure like just keep a few of them in your side deck um that like really win you matches gravity collapse at least to me seems a little win more but if your opponent like stops your turn preemptively and you're not able to make a full board a card like gravity collapse could go a really long way in helping you hinder your opponent so that you can set up your turn again so i think like it could be a good card to consider uh for going first but i'm not sure yet uh, synchro overtake with uh, jet warrior right so this would be the easiest way to get access to uh, jet synchron and the only restriction is that you're locked into synchro summoning for the turn but that's not a restriction in tg really um, especially if you have instant access to a jet synchron you really don't need to go launcher you can go straight into your line and still get um glade blaster plus crimson as long as you have another level one monster a uh, gadget box could be kind of in the same camp as like synchro overtake except this gives you a level one non-tuner token that could be really good especially since it's just like free and there's really no restriction on like the the token there's no cost really uh, it's just a free level one token this mix with like a synchro overtake gives you a free mighty striker without using your normal summon so that could be pretty significant for helping you play around hand traps and stuff and then we got our, our board breakers our droplet and our enemy controller um both of these could go pretty well with uh dragonar so if we get to dragonar they try to interrupt it we can send it for either enemy controller or for forbidden droplet and dragonar can summon itself from graveyard so if dragonar activates and it's and it's sent to the graveyard in the same chain on resolution it could summon itself back right and i showed that off in my very first thing started with tg video if you want to see more about that playing around hand traps and cosmic quasar it's like oh man i just wish this card was possible in tg because you want to summon this during your turn because it's it's synchro effect is basically or not synchro it's its main effect is a dark ruler no more for any number of face-up cards on a field equal to the number of synchro monsters used as material and it's not a quick effect so it can only be used during your turn but that's so strong right if you can slap this card on field you can negate potential uh problematic cards and uh your opponent would not be able to uh negate that effect also it can banish itself to summon out cosmic blazar um or the regular quasar and that could also be pretty cool because it's like this plus a uh, glaive blaster like it banishes itself like you can go into battle phase and do that you can attack banish uh summon out blazar glaive blaster trigger summon back the cosmic quasar and that's like sixteen thousand damage because it's four four thousand attack monsters so i wish this card was possible in tg but as of right now you are locked into tg every single time um that you go into it or that you would be able to go into it um, other than when you do Crimson on the opponent's turn. And that's just like not happening. A little sad, but kind of is what it is. And yeah, I mean, that's like the nature of TG, right? Like if, if TG could really like work with a lot of these other archetypes, the deck would be a lot more like the like the deck would probably be like a meta contender but because of its limitations with the kind of end boards it can make you have to make a lot of concessions that's the deck profile let's get into some of the combos i know that was a bit extensive but that's the way i i, I like to do things is it you know i, I got to get back into the flow of things and I didn't want to make this a short video because uh, I feel like um, I haven't made a TG video in a while, so I feel like I, I, I you know, I gotta 
get the gears turning again. So I was in the lab cooking, right? So let's just get back to the basics, right? So one singular snake eye ash, which is still, you still have like 12 ways into this card. It's still very possible to open just ash, right? In an opening hand. We go ash into poplar, right? And once you see this once, you're, you're gonna see this like five times, but it's gonna be slightly different uh, sequencing each time, so you might want to pay attention. So, uh, original sinful spoils to go into our rocket salamander. Now, this will not be the same every time. We will not always be going to rocket salamander, but I like going into rocket salamander pretty early because that gets us the tank grub into grave early on, and that's really important because tank grub means we're going into multiple level 12s. Going into multiple level 12s, you either need tank grub or you need a uh, warwolf. And it's a lot harder with Warwolf. You need a lot more resources. With Tank Rub, you don't need as many resources. So that's why we're doing it this way. We go into the SP Little Knight. And uh, if you really wanted to be overprotective about it, SP Little Knight could chain block the uh, TG Mighty Striker. I think I do it in one of the replays. You could banish any one of your, like, you could banish your, like, Snake Eyes Ash, um, banish it. And then if you draw Oak, you can just summon back the Ash do whatever right uh, like you can go um, shuffle back original with its own effect shuffle back poplar search oak and then uh summon oak summon ash search poplar boom you have three level ones to i don't know do whatever you want with you know you can go into like pr princess into flameberg I, i'm not flameberg uh raging phoenix that's what you want to do anyway so tg all clear can pop the tg token to search screw serpent and so screw serpent uh, we get an extra normal thanks to TG All Clear. So we go Screw Serpent into Dragonar. Uh, the zones here are important, so uh, just pay attention to uh, where the SP Little Knight is, is where the Trident Launcher is going to be. So just keep these three zones open and keep the other two doing whatever the hell you want with them. Uh, so we're going to go Hyper Librarian. And then uh, we're going to use Rocket Salamander's Revival effect because they're all treated as machines thanks to All Clear to bring back uh, Screw Serpent for another Synchro Summon. We're going to go with Star Guardian. And just a reminder, Hyper Librarian is a mandatory effect. It, it's always going to be Chainlink 1 um, if if you are turn player. And then Star Guardian is going to be Chainlink 2 to add back one of our TG monsters. We're going to add back the Screw Serpent because uh, we're going to go into Trident Launcher and Screw Serpent is going to be the best one to add back to hand for that. So we add back Screw Serpent, we draw a card. It just happened to be TG Warwolf on the top of my list. And then we're gonna use the Star Guardian and the uh, Dragonar to go into TG EX pretty early um, because when we go for the Trident Launcher, we're not gonna be able to set up Glaive Blaster plus TG EX if, if we went for Glaive Blaster first. So I figured keep the extra monster and be able to um, summon out the three and also we get an extra draw off a of Hyper Librarian this way, right? So because we're not using Hyper Librarian, we actually get extra plus off of it. So now we go Trident and it's gonna summon a level one from deck, right? It, it doesn't have to be Booster. It could also be Rocket Salamander, Screw Serpent from hand and Mighty Striker from graveyard. And this is going to be all that you need because you already have your other level five Synchro right here. So you just need one more level five non-tuner Synchro monster, which is going to be your second Dragonar. And then you, you get to draw one more off of Hyper Librarian and then you go into your Glaive Blaster. So now we're gonna uh, activate our Screw Serpent in the graveyard to target one of our monsters with its effect. And then TG EX can, can uh, activate here in response to banish a tuner from our graveyard and negate our Screw Serpent effect. We're gonna banish our Mighty Striker. And because we banish our Mighty Striker face up, we get to trigger Glaive Blaster and uh, the TG close that we milled at the beginning of the turn also gets to trigger to reset itself to our field and to summon out Mighty Striker to our field. So we we did all of this off of one card. We basically went plus two because we drew three. So three new cards from the top of our deck and you're gonna have to like set something like hopefully you drew like an Imperm or what may have you. You're gonna need to set or play something to not get fucking screwed over by game mechanics. You can just end your turn here. So once it hits their main phase, they do get turn priority, so anything short of a Kaiju, you should be fine, um, simply because you have TG close, right? So even if they attempt to negate Mighty Striker, because Trident Launcher, beautiful effect, it, the TG monsters, uh, the TG Synchro monsters you, it points to, your opponent cannot target them with card effects. 
So they can't target Mighty Striker with any sort of Imperm or whatever. They can't target Glaive Blaster with any sort of effect. So when Mighty Striker activates here, it's probably going to resolve thanks to how much you have here. Um, so you can activate it in, in response to any kind of effect if it's not like a, an immediate danger. Chainlink 1, right? On summon, Crimson Dragon adds a Spell or Trap that mentions Crimson Dragon. So that's going to be our Synchro Rumble. Now, Poplar should have been Chainlink 1 because the opponent is turned player right now, but you know, EDO Pro. Chainlink 2 is going to be the Mighty Striker to mill a TG card from our deck. And then, you know, Poplar gets resolved. Because there's no immediate threat in this Chainlink, we're also just going to go, hey, fuck it. Crimson Dragon again to uh, target our Glaive Blaster and shuffle itself back. So now we get to make Blazar, and then the chain goes down, Poplar, mill the limiter removal so that um, turn three, we get to recycle either one of our synchros or one of our tuners. And then chain link one, Crimson Dragon's uh, effect on summon to search the synchro rumble so that we have a better follow-up for turn three, right? Because we're not gonna win this turn, right? So we might as well have all this to, you know, make a really big push. Also, you can put these guys in defense mode. That's something that I was not even thinking about when I was building these combo lines, but you can put these two in defense mode just to play around the lightning storm because why not? And I, even though you basically have three Omni negates between the TG close and the two with cosmic blazar, it doesn't hurt to be careful because you, you wouldn't have to negate uh, like lightning storm if they, because then only, only the trident launcher would leave. So just to showcase, what you can do. Glaive Blaster still has its two banishes, right? So because you're not gonna be banishing your own card to uh, trigger Glaive Blaster, you can use both your banishes on opponent's monster summon from the extra deck. Rel Relinquish Anima is the perfect target because banishing this is like the perfect way to counter it if it happened to be pointing to something. Thankfully, Trident Launcher only points down so, so they can't Anima this card. But if you goofed and left something in the zone under their extra monster zone, you can play around that. Um, and then yeah, Blazar can negate two other things and then Glaive Blaster can bring it back, ignoring summoning conditions so you don't have to worry about it's uh, must be synchro summoned. That is the bread and butter of where Snake Eyes can get you with TG. So now I want to show you guys some of the TG Warwolf stuff. Because now that we have Warwolf, or now, now that we're utilizing Warwolf, I want to show you guys what it can do or what it adds to the deck. So. Uh, we started this one with, with uh, Diabal Star rather than Snake Eye Ash because you're, you're more likely going to draw Diabal Star. So you go uh, Diabal Star into Snake Eye Ash. And then so on that summon, you can summon out Warwolf. When you summon any one of your Snake Eye monsters or, or like Poplar or whatever, you can you can always trigger Warwolf. It's 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 pretty rare that this card won't be able to trigger, especially because your spell cards chain link one. So even though it's a one effect, it'll it'll pretty much always work. So then you get to search the Jet Synchron off of Snake Eye Ash. Because you you special summon the Ash instead of normal summoning it, you still get to normal summon the Jet Synchron and then use it for a Synchro of Herald of the Arclight. Now we get to use a Simful to draw a card, and we get to use a Jet Synchron to send a card from hand to graveyard to special summon it. A little caveat to this is that Herald of the Arclight would send any monsters sent from hand or main deck to the graveyard is banished instead. But because we have a spell here, Jet Synchron's fine. So just understand, in this particular line, only use it if if you already have a spell card in hand or spell or trap card in hand. So now we get to bring back our uh, Jet Synchron, go into Mighty Striker, and this is kind of going to be the same thing, except slightly weaker. So at the uh, cost of giving us a line of protection for our turn, we will not be able to make the full TG combo. As you can see, we don't have the four for the core, right? So we don't have Tank Rub here. Instead, we have the TG Warwolf, which is going to impact our lines, but we get to still use it for a Synchro Summon for Hyper Librarian. We get to go Rocket Salamander, bring back our Mighty Striker, Synchro into our Dragonar, and then we get to go into our Glaive Blaster, Librarian can draw a card, and then we get to temporarily banish to use our TG close. And this is important. You want to temporarily banish a synchro on your field to trigger the TG close, but you cannot use it on non-TG synchros because remember, you are locked into TGs for the rest of the turn. So if you try to banish your Herald of the Arclight just so that you can trigger TG close, 
Herald of the Arclight will not come back. It will stay gone and you will feel like an idiot. Just remember, you need another TG Synchro on top of Glaive Blaster to be able to revive our TG Close in this manner. But otherwise, it may have used three cards from hand, but we we have four interruptions here. We have two Omni Negates, a soft Floodgate, right? So there are certain cards that cannot be used while however the Arclight's on the field. And we have a Glaive Blaster as well. If they play a Synchro deck, we're gonna be drawing during their turn. And we drew two, two new cards. So uh, three minus two, we'll have four cards in hand on top of uh, the four interruptions. So I don't think that's a bad deal. So now delving into more lines with Warwolf. So, you know, what if you open Ash or Bonfire to normal summon the Ash? Then you get to go Poplar, Poplar effect, summon. Uh, you can chain Warwolf uh, to the Poplar to chain block it. And so you can protect the searching of your uh, original. Assuming that they didn't use it already. So now you get to use uh, original, send the Poplar, summon Jet Synchron. Uh, Poplar gets to put itself in Spell and Trap Zone. And then we Synchro 4 into Herald of the Arclight. And then we get to, to go Snake Eye Ash to go into Oak. Oak will then get to summon back our Jet Synchron. And now we get to go into Mighty Striker. And boom, it's the same line. Except this time, we only use two cards from hand because we actually drew the Snake Eye Ash instead of using three. Same idea. Screw Serpent, Screw Serpent into Salamander. Boom, Dragonar. Are somewhat of a four for the core. Glaive Blaster plus Librarian. And we drew two cards this time. So in this line, we're back to five cards in hand because we only used two in hand and we got two cards back. So it's a little better um, of a situation compared to the last one. So now I want to uh, kind of walk through what a limiter removal combo line may look like. So this time uh, we're using our limiter removal to uh, search like Warwolf and Booster Raptor. Um, and this is really convenient because you can save this Booster Raptor for later on in the turn where um, after you go for Dragonar, so you don't have to use it like right away. Then go Snake Ash. And I would say using limiter removal before Warwolf, I mean before Snake Eye Ash here would be better because the only thing that would really punish that is Droll. But if they have like an Ash Blossom and they see a, 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 a two for one, they're going to negate it, right? So like, because it's it's too good not to negate it. It's too good not to Ash Blossom it. And then you're just going to summon out Snake Eye Ash. It's going to be like, oh shit, fuck. <laughs> uh, so now you're going to Ash into Poplar, Poplar, Warwolf. Original, original Send Poplar, Jet Synchron, Poplar into Spawn Trap Zone, Herald, Ash, send the uh, send the Poplar and Spawn Trap Zone in itself, summon out the Oak. Oak gets us to the Chet. Synchro into Mighty. Mighty gets us into All Clear. Special out the Booster Raptor. And now we're going to the uh, Marshall Metal Marcher. Metal Marcher is going to be able to grab us back the uh, TG Mighty Striker on top of being able to uh, get us to mill the TG close. TG all clear, pop, search, all clear gives us extra normal. Rocket Salamander brings us back the Booster Raptor uh, because we control all clear, he's treated as a, a machine and that allows us to go for SP. And this is actually really important. So TG close triggers in graveyard when a synchro monster is banished. Now, we can't go into SP later on in our turn. We also cannot artificially trigger SP's second effect to banish itself and another synchro we control. The only time that we can get SP to banish a synchro in our control is when it's summoned. So we used SP here to banish the Metal Marcher so that TG Close could trigger to reset itself. Because when we only have four zones, it's gonna be very difficult to set up a Glaive Blaster plus another TG Synchro. So now we have two layers of protection, right? We have SP for the Dragonar and we have Herald of the Arclight to negate anything, but we don't have enough zones to make the full TG combo line. So we had to make that concession of using Metal Marcher as, as that middleman to get us to trigger the TG close. 
because if we would have had to wait till our opponent's turn, it wouldn't really do anything. So being able to use it during our turn is pretty nice. So Salamander, summon Screw Serpent, Screw Serpent, Salamander, Synchro 5 into Dragonar, uh, Mighty Striker plus our two monsters to make a level 5 Synchro, another level 5 Synchro, Glade Blaster. You could also go Hyper Librarian there to save your Dragonar, but personal preference. And yeah, now we have five interruptions because one off of SP, one off of Herald, two off of Glade Blaster, and one off of TG Close. On top of, uh, we have three cards in hand still, and you have good follow-up. You have your Break Limiter. Jet Synchron is still in the graveyard, so uh, next turn, if you want to revive that, potentially go for another TG Synchro like Dragonar, or if you want to go for something else, you know? It's just, there's no pr battle protection in this particular scenario, and I don't know who they would hit first, the Arclight or the SP. If they skip their battle phase, that means we're not getting gamed, which means there is a potential for us to get follow-up. That's good for us, I, I would say. So continuing on, this is going to be the same thing that we've seen for uh, the past few replays now. I like starting off with the normal Snake Eye Ash because it's it's harder to work with normal Snake Eye Ash than it is to work with uh, Simple Spoils. So now I get to go for All Clear plus SP. So this is a slightly different line, right? So as I said, the sequencing is going to be very important. So we got Screw Serpent, Salamander, Dragonar, Dragonar gets us our four, four for the core. Harp Librarian, Salamander. This time we're going to go into our second uh, Mighty Striker here. Now we get to go for uh, Warwolf. And we get to go for Star Guardian. And now we get to go for Harp Librarian plus our... Uh, Star Guardian to add back, so we're drawing a card here. Then I get to go for our Glaive Blaster uh, pretty early on. Now, the sad thing about this Glaive Blaster is that it will not be protected by our Trident Launcher because our Trident Launcher needs three open zones to be able to activate its effect. I do, it has to summon three monsters, which is just... I hate it, but it is what it is, right? At least it, it does something. So Glaive Blaster, and you have to do this before the other point in the turn because... Uh, you will not get another chance to do this, actually. So you banish your uh, Star Guardian to be able to um, reset your TG close. And boom. There you go. For Trident Launcher, TG Warwolf, TG Warwolf, TG Mighty Striker. Now, the reason why you would not be able to banish this Mighty Striker is because it's not special summon from the extra deck. It's summoned from the graveyard. And so this is going to be your end board. This is how you're passing turn over to your opponent. And that is not going to do... <laughs> so you would not have been able to get your TG close off of this Mighty Striker because uh, Glaive Blaster would not have been able to banish it. So um, you drew two cards off of uh, Hyper Librarian and you were able to basically get back what you lost. So you're back at five cards in hand. So whatever you have in hand plus uh, two cards. So uh, as soon as they go main phase, right? Um, obviously they wouldn't do wanted in main phase, but ju just as an example, uh, you get to go into your Dragonar. Dragonar is immediately gonna trigger and it gets chain blocked by the Mighty Striker. So no ghost spell on the Dragonar. Uh, Dragonar gets to bring back Mighty Striker plus Star Guardian. Star Guardian gets to bring back uh, any one of your TG monsters from your graveyard back to your hand. And it also gets to quick synchro into something like TGEX. And now Mighty Striker gets to go into something like Wonder Magician. Wonder Magician can pop any spell or trap card on the field. And so now you have a situation where you have a spell or trap removal as a, as a trigger effect. You have a double glaive and you have the TG close plus five cards in hand plus follow up. This may be in more of a grind game situation if you feel like maybe your Cosmic Blazar isn't going to be as good. If you're facing like a deck that uses a lot of um, macro or um, something like that where you may not need the protection as much or you, you may not need the Blazar as much. This may be the preferred route. You can still make Blazar on, on the opponent's turn using your um, TGEX plus Mighty Striker plus Glade Blaster combo line. This is just one way to make a board just using the TG engine as your end pieces. Also, be careful with Wonder Magician because her effect on Synchro Summon to, to destroy a spell or trap is mandatory. So if you summon her during your turn and the only spell and trap card on the field is all clear, all clear is getting destroyed. 
so just do not summon Wonder Magician until it is the right time. And now for the final line. It's pretty much the exact same as the last combo line, except there's uh, one difference on our on how we play the opponent's turn. So we go SP, all clear, pop the TG token to search our Screw Serpent. Screw Serpent, get us into Dragonar. Dragonar gets us our four for the core. Hyper Librarian, Salamander, bring back Tank Rub, Mighty Striker number two. Uh, get our TG Warwolf. Get uh, Star Guardian to add back the Warwolf. Hyper Librarian to draw here. Uh, go into Glaive Blaster. Banish our Star Guardian while we can to trigger the TG close. Bring back the Star Guardian triggering by, by triggering both TG Close and Glade Blaster at the same time. And then we go for Trident Launcher to summon our three. Uh, the Warwolf, I would suggest, is the one that you summon from hand. And you need to summon the Mighty Striker from Graveyard. The one from deck really doesn't matter. I just like having the second Warwolf there because it's not really going to do anything as a draw. So we might as well get it out of the deck. So, yeah. And we're going to end our turn the exact same way. Wait for our opponent's main phase. Same thing, right? Obviously, they wouldn't use wanted in main phase, but this is just to show, you know, I just needed the turn priority passed over. So now we're going to go Dragonar, except this time we don't summon back Star Guardian. We summon back the uh, Hyper Librarian, Mighty Striker, make Halberd Cannon on their turn. And this can also be good because Halberd Cannon can negate summons. Just like Blazar, except this is slightly weaker because you have to use one of your Glade Blaster Banishes on your Halberd Cannon to bring it back, right? So um, you can banish your own Halberd Cannon after it uses its effect, and then you can bring it back. Just be wary that if they imperm this, this guy needs to be face up on the field to resolve his effect. So you cannot Glade Blaster banish your own Halberd Cannon to dodge something like an imperm-like effect. You, that, that, that's what the TG close is for, I guess. Can negate two summons with your TG Hopper Cannon, right? So unlike Cosmic Blazer, where you have a, a little more options in this line, Glade Blaster plus Hopper Cannon is really only here as a way to negate summons. You get one extra deck banish off of Glade Blaster on your opponent's side, and you get TG close. And you have just like two cards from hand, so you still have five cards in hand, so it's... It's more than likely you're going to have a hand trap or something in a lot of these lines because you're not using a lot of cards from hand or like discarding a lot, except for that one line with the limiter removal, but that's it. So this has been TG Snake Eye post September 2024 ban list. Let me know what you guys think. This is actually post Rage of the Abyss, post Rota. The format's going to be different and it's going to be dangerous, but I think we can make it happen if we're tenacious enough. Uh, some people may still want to play like the horse engine and stuff, and I say go for it. Um, if you if you think that's what works for you, by all means. But uh, with no Baron, I don't really see the vision. And the extra deck is still going to need some work. I'm going to work a little more on this deck to see like which lines I like the best, and then work from there. Double Mighty Striker is really only here if you want to go for the double Blade Blast plus, plus Hobbard Cannon, but if that's not your forte... If you'd rather just focus on the Blazar, which is perfectly fine, if anything is better, then that's perfectly fine. Then just don't go for the double Mighty Striker. Just uh, put in a third Dragonar, put in Wonder Magician, put in extra Link Monsters. Uh, there was a line with double Herald, but it was kind of redundant because it wasn't as good as SP Herald. Figure out what it is that you want out of your extra deck and uh, try to go for it. I guess that'll be all for me. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.